Hello, I'm Jesus Labarta, and I'm going to talk today about the identifying structure in parallel program traces. The idea is to understand the structure of the application such that we can identify and extract regions of the trace which can be used uh, for a very precise analysis of the behavior of the areas of interest as well as for comparative studies, for example, in scaling uh, assessments. I will be showing how to do it with Paraver, and I will be showing how in the process the analyst can be, get a first understanding of what is the behavior of the application she may be facing for the first time. She may not even have the source code. The structure is the patterns that we identify in the space-time behavior of the application. By space, I understand processors or threads, and time is the, the natural time evolution of the application. Typical patterns would be repetitive, iterative patterns, but we could also find monotonically increasing patterns, for example, in durations of computation, so decreasing patterns, or we might find uh, nested patterns, for example, patterns where inside the iterative structure we can find subfaces and each of those subfaces can may have a different characteristical behavior including further iterative subiterations the traces that we obtain are the result of runs on real systems and these are exposed like anything in life to noise perturbations so every measurement system and every analysis should be aware that these things happen and one of the objectives is to try to identify as far as possible regions which are as uh, clean as possible uh, of those perturbations. The objective is thus to work on the original trace or on a filter subtrace of that. In cases where the original traces are very large we will need to extract some of the records in those traces to generate a, a, a sub, uh, subtrace which contains only a partial information but sufficient information to identify a structure. On this subtrace we can identify the structure, identify the relevant intervals or the relevant uh, regions for the focus of the analysis we can, and then we can cut those regions out of the original trace and use those in the very precise and very detailed analysis. The idea is to apply to these traces, be it the original of the or the filters of trace, some timelines that expose that structure. Of course, uh, depending on which is the information that has been kept in the in the filters of trace, some of these views may not be available, but in principle we will have uh, some of the views which I'm going to propose will be available, easily available with very, very tra so filtered traces which are much significantly smaller than the original one. Typical metrics that I would recommend, the very first is useful duration, is how long is the computation between exit of an MPI call and entry to the next one, or with open MP call similarly. So, but is the code in user level, which is uh, the relevant behavioral characteristic of an application. Of course, if we have MPI information in the trace, MPI events information, we can look at that. But there are other additional metrics which we could look at, like instantaneous parallelism or like granularities, which would give us additional information and structure. I will be showing these things on a manual uh, approach, although there is possible to do some of these steps in an automat automatic or semi-automatic way. I have in the slides, I have some examples of the, of the traces that I've been analyzing, but I think it is going to be better to directly proceed to the analysis of the, of the trace uh, interactively, and you can look at the PowerPoint slides in the material as it will they were, will be provided as material with the presentation this is uh, the information i have preloaded for a trace corresponding through 384 processes 
of one application and I have loaded three, four of the configuration files of the views that I'm explained that might be relevant to expose structure. And the one that I would recommend as most important, and at least initially, is this useful duration view, where the color represents how long is the computation between two MPI calls, and a lighter color represents very short duration, a darker color represents very large duration. Complementary to that one, we have MPI calls, if available. In this trace, we do have them. And we see that there are some, for example, MPI all reduces and MPI weights receives. We see actually also the MPI init and the MPI finalize. Working on these two, just on these two, and mainly on the useful duration, we see actually two phases in the, in the application. One of them, has a high variability, a lot of uh, differences between processes. It's separated by collectives. And uh, the, it's actually something that typically is at the beginning. So typically, we often would uh, speculate that corresponds to initializations. And this is our speculation today, also because we have the, some indication that the code should be an iterative code, should have a regular structure, and where we see such a regular structure is, is here, a regular iterative structure in this case. So I am going to zoom into that region, and I will see the MPI calls view and the useful duration view. And I will see the iterative pattern, which is what is expected for many of the engineering or science simulations that we are analyzing. The trace was around 300 something, 350 megabytes. It starts being uh, taking a little bit of time to process and to compute online into. Uh, all the, the metrics, but we have it here. Actually, the gradient coloring is not uh, very high, very different between places. Maybe we can fit the semantic scale such that we fit the smallest uh, useful duration to light green and the largest useful duration over all the space time dimension to dark blue, and we have more contrast in the in the information nevertheless as we saw before we will identify this uh, iterative structure it is coming we see it here it's relatively regular we see nevertheless that there are different parts where we see some sort of variations perturbations other parts where the behavior seems to be more regular more 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 structured if we zoom into them we can see a little bit more of detail and probably we will speculate or we will uh, guess that this the natural behavior of the application is the more regular one this is what at least what the programmer would have expected and we expect and speculate that sometimes these kind of perturbations are or can be generated by noise or, or due to operating system noise in this case what happens is that there is a long duration here much longer than everything around it and this duration, one process feels the pain, the direct pain, the others will feel the pain indirectly due to the communication dependency through the dependency change through the communications. But we can guess that we have a region here, for example, which seems to be very very, very clean, seems to be uh, probably one clean iteration with perturbations. We can analyze it further deep in detail and we can see that inside that iteration there seems to be different phases a long computation phase followed by a phase with some computation and communication but still the computation are 
fairly sufficiently large, a few hundreds of microseconds. At the end, we have also long computation or sufficiently long computation bars. In between, we have regions which are very fine grained. If we move the mouse over them, they are in the order of between 0.9 and, and, and 64 microseconds. So there are very, very fine grained regions. We see that they are related to intensive communication and intensive MPI calls. So we get a certain understanding of what the structure of the application. We might even zoom into them and see a little bit the importance of uh, this. Uh, if we fit the semantic scale here, for example, we see there are some regions that have s f relatively large execution time. Well, large in this case is 400 microseconds, but where most of the other ones are 11 microseconds, around 11 microseconds. So we see the very high impact of those things, which uh, be given their kind of random distribution, probably we can speculate that they correspond to noise and we can uh, get at least a feeling that maybe this part of the application is sensitive to operating system noise. These two views are the most important in terms from my point, especially this one, the, the useful duration, but probably there are other views that are even, even more aggregated than these ones and are, have very important uh, semantics in terms of identifying structural or repetitive behavior. And one of these views, we have them down here, is uh, the instantaneous uh, parallelism is one of these potential views and let me copy the scale the time scale from from this useful duration where i see the repetitive st uh, structure to this one with instantaneous parallelism and we see at every point in time how many processes are computing are active in user level code. This will show also a more aggregated view of the behavior of the application. We'll also show a structure about the repetitiveness of the behavior and as you see that it correlates to the useful duration. It will give us information that there are really regions of, this, of the time where the performance with the number of concurrent threads is very low because there's a lot of communications and very fine granularity as we have seen. And it, it can be used to identify a structure. Nevertheless, there is another one which I have here, which is the average instantaneous granularity of the computation. So instead of summing up how many threads are active at every point in time, in it, this one is computing the average of how long each of those computations were. If there are many processes doing very fine grained computations, the value will be very low. If all the processes do very long computations, the granularity will be very, very large. And we, we see the, the shape of this uh, timeline, we'll actually see that in reality it's a fairly good uh, uh, indicator of, of a structure in the application. It's, it's far clearer, far more differentiating phases than it is the instantaneous parallelism. So maybe this is also a one other important region of important view to identify a structure. What we should be doing methodologically then is once we have identified, for example, this repetitive structure and we consider one or two or a few of these iterations to be our focus of analysis and we try to get rid, not to choose the ones that have perturbations, we have to cut off the original trace a region that goes, for example, from here to here or from here to there, from the beginning of this state to the beginning of this state. This will be a very precise cut of one iteration of this execution. We can do that, and in our case, I, I, let's say I did it for one iteration, and uh, I had uh, the trace width for one iteration, for example. 
this is one of the cuts and this is a cut of the original trace the mechanism for cutting the, the details of the mechanism will be explained are explained in a different in a different session of this uh, series and we will uh, you will see how to do the cut as well as how to in, in general how to uh, handle large traces as for now the major my major interest was on on identifying the structure of the of the application the point I, what i want to show now is that now we have the trace which is a cut with all the information on this one and on this one we can apply the, the same configuration file the configuration file that determines for example the structure of that one and we will see the useful duration for example and we will see the MPI calls for for this uh, for this uh, region that we have of, of interest but we can also load the, the configuration files that show us that show us the um, for example the instantaneous granularity we have we can apply all of the same uh, let me copy and paste the, the time synchronize the two windows and we see the the same the same metrics that we have been seeing before for this specific region the only thing is that now here this trace has also hardware counters has also message sizes has also connectivities has all the details so this trace can now be used for very detailed analysis in the next step of the methodology which is essentially building or doing the, the efficiency models. Of course, you have to do this on a trace of, let's say in this case, it was on a trace of 384 processors. You can do it on a trace of 96 or on a trace of 48. You, could, you can do it at the different scales for the different traces. You hope to see the same overall structure because they uh, come from essentially the same program executed on different core counts you should be able to cut the same region one iteration for example for all those traces and that would be the base for the scalability analysis you can also look at the at the inter a little bit on that part kind of still exploring the internal substructure within the major outer iterative structure and uh, in this case i'm going i'm not going to do it now to keep the 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 presentation short but some of the one of the things that uh, draws the attention for example is that if you compare the timeline of one iteration for the for the this large core count and the timeline of one iteration with the larger core count you see essentially the same pattern except that this this region here is proportionally shorter in the when you use less cores so this gives you insight or hints on how the scaling behavior goes and this is all very qualitative that should be the study of the structure analysis phases is to do very qualitative descriptions or understandings of the behavior in order to uh, prepare things for the more uh, numerically precise assessments in the next step of building the models this is essentially the approach to identify a structure i hope it has been useful and i hope you follow next uh, presentations about how to apply the efficiency model thank you very much